eviction is not easy. Um, if you have somebody in there who's not paying the rent, um, each location, each city, each state has its own eviction rules. And I refer that even myself as a, as a licensed attorney, I don't do evictions. I refer to attorneys in the area who do a lot of evictions because uh, they are more reasonably priced and they know what the rules are. But it is absolutely no fun to do an eviction. So I go to great lengths to avoid uh, doing an eviction. Occasionally they're necessary, but it's, uh, it's kind of a specialized uh, deal. And then the second question is, um, it sounds like you've had good fortune, so you may not have all of the practical experience, but from your legal experience, do you have how long do you have to wait before evicting a, uh, a tenant and then how long to, typically does that take in Texas? Go ahead Charlie. We, we've been doing them because yeah. when they do them up here in the woodlands they use an attorney yeah. designated up here. I stay out of it. <laughs> now, I mean uh, you can start the eviction process essentially after you give a three-day notice for whatever the, the reason so happens to be have, on payment. So they have till the 15th, according to the contract, they have till the 15th if they don't, if they don't pay, pay on by the 15th, you get three days. You give a three-day notice on the 15th, uh, then on the 18th, uh, then you can file the eviction paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, now with uh, the paperwork, so uh, like, uh, like Dave was saying here, we, we don't do that ourselves. We outsource that as well because we want to make sure it's done in, you know, in accordance with the local regulations and whatnot. Um, but we'll, we hand it over to this company that is a professional eviction company um, and with you know, their lawyers that are specialized in this. The process itself at that point, uh, it typically takes about two, three, uh, usually about two weeks to get a court date set. And then that court date is usually another two to three weeks out. So really by the time, and then at the court date, it usually is another week until uh, the writ is done when the actual constable comes out, knocks on the door if they're not out by that point already, uh, and says, we're forcibly evicting you. So that whole process from the time that you, you do your three-day notice till they're actually out uh, takes about a month. Um, it can be shorter if it's an extreme circumstance. You can kind of request that. Then again, that usually requires more money as well. Um, but uh, it's about a month process, and with that, again, you want to make sure, as um, Dave talked about a, a lot earlier, that you've got the paperwork in hand. So you have, here's the evidence of non-payment, here is our three-day notice. Then that three-day notice has to be both mailed, uh, physically mailed, and posted on the door. Uh, so there's a lot of these steps that have to take place to make sure it's done in accordance. If there's anything off on the lease, then it's going to get kicked back, and it sets the whole thing back. You know, or if there's anything that you didn't have paperwork wise, basically you start that process over as soon as that's identified. So, so it, it's time consuming. And I will say, I've, I've had my own property in, in Richmond, Virginia, and it's 60 to 90 days to do an eviction in Richmond, Virginia. Wow. So, so it's if you much didn't have longer. another tenant waiting and you had their deposit, you could have some damages associated with having to find them a place to stay in the meantime. Right, precisely. Well, we, we usually have a, a clause in the lease that talks about first avail, you know, making the property available and not warranting that because you can never, even great tenants may say, you know, the moving truck didn't show up, I'm sorry. We usually let one or two day deals, we let people work that out between the tenants if they, because I'm usually end to end, I literally have a new tenant in there as the old tenant's moving out. Uh, sometimes, I actually bought a guy out for a week, like I said, you know, he was going to move out like you know, April 30th, and I said, can I give you a week's rent back when I give you a security deposit back? He left the place in nice condition, and I said, because I actually want to get my painting crew in there and spiff up the place, and I had, I had so tightly rented it, we didn't have a break. It is difficult. You can do little touch-up stuff and do plumbing repairs and stuff, but in terms of, like, completely repainting an apartment, you really need, the landlord really needs to own the property at that point. So we usually do that right at the beginning when we take over property, but I bought you know, occupied property. So the first vacancy periods, we ended up like in the fourplex, going through each apartment as they became vacant the first time and did the cleanup and renovations. But I took a building that was renting four apartments, 500 a month each, and when I sold it, Seven or eight years later, they were renting for a little under a thousand a month each. But uh, it, like I said, I made you know 
forty, fifty thousand dollars in investment in that time period, but you know the property sold at profit and it was kicking. So, but that's what it takes. It takes that type of uh, management. Uh, people who are not patient cannot buy properties like that. They need to buy something that's ready to move in, maybe do a little touch-up painting. So it depends on where you are. We did dramatic renovation in one of the units that I mentioned, one with the candles in it, but we also did significant renovations in the other three units. I will say that, um, going back to the eviction side, that Texas is a very landlord-friendly state, at least. So even though the rules are different you know, in each of the different counties, um, slightly different, uh, it, it is generally landlord favorable. So as long as you do have the correct paperwork, you follow the correct process, we, we have not lost an eviction that we filed. Fortunately, we're not filing a lot of evictions, but I, like we talked about, sometimes the, you just can't predict that a tenant's going to be a bad tenant, and we have had to go that process, um, but we've never lost an eviction. So. So on the evictions, is this strictly a financial thing? In other words, do you evict people for other than non-payment of rent? Eviction is the number one. Uh, sorry, um, uh, non-payment is the, definitely the number one reason. But we have had some folks that have uh, basically broken the rules of the lease. So having too many people over mm -hmm. um, or living in Bethlehem mm -hmm. House. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, just frequent uh Frequent, frequent complaints of noise and um, illegal activities, potentially, things like that. So. There is a concern, you know, I, I have a condo, but you have an HOA, right? You know, and so part of the yeah. requirement is to abide by the rules of and the that's HOA. That's in the lease. That's in the lease. Uh -huh. But when, if they do that, well then, you know, is that grounds that yes. you can yeah. pursue yeah, an eviction, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's Mr. Brady. And I think we had, the, we had the case recently with the, uh, the work trucks, the panel of work trucks, yeah. being parked uh, in areas that were not approved by the HOA. So, uh, but the lease says that, a well-written lease says that you have to, the tenant has to comply with the rules of the HOA. So, I mean, it's... You know, it's, you do it on the front end, and then you have a basis to do it. And uh, again, the problem is then you're still creating friction. You're still creating a turnover because that person says, well, you know, I'm not going to comply with the rules. And you're like, well, you have to, you know, you're violating the lease. So you put the person out. What we usually try and do in those cases is give them notice that they're being terminated, but immediately place the property up for rental so that we can, again, try and avoid the vacancy gap. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't.